Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to give you all an update on fluvoxamine, the oral SSRI medication that's shown some promise in the use for COVID infections. The most recent trial was published in The Lancet in late October and was a double-blind placebo-controlled trial called TOGETHER out of medical centers in Brazil. The study was looking at whether giving fluvoxamine would help prevent progression of COVID to hospitalization and was stopped early because the researchers were able to show the benefit of this treatment earlier than expected. In the end, 741 patients were given fluvoxamine 100 milligrams twice a day for 10 days while 756 patients were randomized to receive placebo. And they found that of the patients that were randomized to take fluvoxamine, 79 of 741, or 11%, went to the hospital, versus 119 of 756, or 16% of patients that received placebo went to the hospital. There were 17 deaths in the fluvoxamine group versus 25 deaths in the placebo group. So overall, there was about a 30% risk reduction for patients that were in the fluvoxamine group from progression to needing to go to the hospital. And to clarify, they defined going to the hospital as needing to stay in the ER six or more hours or having to transfer the patient to another hospital that had better ability to treat complications from COVID. However, as with all studies, there are side effects to both the medication given and even perceived side effects to the placebo. So patients always drop out. So if you take out the patients that did not complete at least eight days of the fluvoxamine or placebo, then the numbers are even better. The risk reduction reduces to about 70% for patients that actually took the fluvoxamine medication and only one death occurred in this group versus 12 deaths in the placebo group. This continues to be reassuring that fluvoxamine is showing a benefit for preventing progression to hospitalization and death. What great news! And something else worth noting is that this medication is generic, costing about $4 for a 10-day course. So let's look at who they chose to participate in the study. They chose patients that had COVID, as well as at least one condition that put them at higher risk for complications from COVID, things like obesity, cardiovascular disease, or kidney disease. Let's talk a little bit about why patients dropped out of the fluvoxamine group. The most common side effects were nausea and diarrhea, and of a total of 741 patients enrolled in the fluvoxamine group, 193 of them dropped out for various reasons before taking the medication for at least eight days. But we also saw a dropout in the placebo group. Of 756 patients in the placebo group, 137 of them dropped out. And of those that dropped out, 84 of the fluvoxamine group and 64 in the placebo group dropped out due to side effects or perceived side effects from the medication specifically, or the placebo. This is helpful to know this so I can strongly encourage my patients to expect some of these side effects and try to press on to continue the medication in order to receive its benefit. Since this medication has been around for about 25 years, we know that about 25% of patients taking this medication will have some amount of nausea. And this isn't the first time I've discussed fluvoxamine. I did some earlier videos about other data and the science behind fluvoxamine, but I'll give another more brief overview here today as well. Y'all may remember another double-blind placebo-controlled study published in November 2020, so about a year ago. In this study of 152 patients, researchers gave half the group fluvoxamine 100 milligrams three times a day instead of twice a day, compared to a placebo. The main thing they studied was clinical deterioration, which is similar to the other study. Of those that took fluvoxamine, zero out of 80 of them met the criteria for clinical deterioration, while six of 72 of the patients in the placebo group had clinical deterioration. I remember thinking a year ago that this data was really exciting, and now I continue to be so encouraged by the latest data. I really hope this medication will continue to gain traction and the results will continue to be positive. It really is what the medical community has been longing for, a cheap, 
oral medication that can prevent hospitalizations and deaths. We continue to see so many of our brothers and sisters around the world that have not or cannot get vaccinated yet, so this could be so helpful for them. So why in the world was this medication even considered in the treatment for COVID-19? Fluvoxamine or Luvox is an antidepressant drug approved by the FDA for obsessive compulsive disorder and is often used for depression as well. It's in a class of medications called SSRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. The class of SSRIs was best known for treating depression by increasing the amount of serotonin in the brain. Some of the SSRIs also bind to receptors within a cell called the Sigma-1 receptor. And this receptor has various functions, but one of them includes stopping the production of cytokines. And the serious complication seen with COVID-19 is an out of control inflammatory response called cytokine storm. So the theory is that the SSRIs with the highest level of binding to the Sigma-1 receptor will help prevent cytokine storm in COVID-19. And the SSRI with the greatest sigma-1 receptor binding is fluvoxamine. While lesser binding is seen with sertraline or Zoloft and fluoxetine or Prozac. There's almost no sigma-1 receptor activity seen with citalopram or Celexa or paroxetine Paxil. Other theories about why this medication may work is that fluvoxamine is known to have an antiplatelet activity, and it's also known to increase levels of plasma melatonin. Well, so what's next? Sadly, I don't think this medication will ever get specific FDA approval for the treatment of COVID-19. This medication is cheap, generic, and widely available, and no one's going to make money by using it in mass quantities. So no one's going to spend the money needed to get the FDA approval. However, it is already FDA approved, but for obsessive compulsive disorder. So that certainly allows physicians to use it off label for COVID-19. Currently, the NIH has it listed under potential treatments for COVID-19, but says that it does not recommend for or against disuse and is waiting for more data. But this was last updated in April, 2021. Patients should know that if they take fluvoxamine, they should avoid caffeine since this medication causes caffeine to stay in our systems longer and can lead to insomnia and jitteriness. And furthermore, patients with very, very uncontrolled depression or bipolar disorder may not be able to use this medication. As always, please discuss starting any medications with your own physician. Thanks for joining me.